thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Francois, for the invitation and everybody to be here in this very important uh, symposium about fasting. Actually, I got into uh, fasting research uh, four years ago when we met with Francois in France and uh, we spoke and we decided to start this collaboration. But uh, fasting was uh, very popular to me. I am from Greece and I'm uh, 60 now years old and when I was a child and for all my life I was fasting. I didn't know that what we are doing is fasting, but uh, actually when I was a child, uh, my mother and all the child at that time, all the children, they were running after us in the morning to give us some milk and then nobody was drinking that because it, it was disgusting at that time. And uh, we were fasting. So fasting was uh, very, very familiar to our society and to our culture. And uh, I was fasting without knowing that uh, this is something that is called fasting according to science. According to our religion, fasting is something very important. And uh, because I'm Orthodox, uh, we have this uh, in our religion, this free will. It's very important uh, element of our uh, religion uh, to have this free will. And uh, for that reason, uh, fasting was uh, something that was very very popular in, uh, in Mediterranean countries and especially in my country. That's why I, I, I got into, into fasting with Francois because, uh, because uh, it, it, for me it was, it was very important. I was, uh, I, I, I'm a pharmacist by training and uh, I study pharmacy in, uh, in Greece, in, uh, in Greece. And then I went, uh, I did my PhD and most of my postdoctoral work at Harvard Medical School 30 something years ago. And then I came back to my country because somebody uh, called me and said, okay, why don't you come to Greece, you and some other people, because we want to create the first uh, biochemistry school because we didn't have, we were the, the, the only, I mean, uh, country in Europe that we ha didn't have biochemistry school. So that's why I came back. 25, 27 years ago. And uh, my work was uh, on uh, free radicals, oxidative stress, and uh, the uh, interference and the effect of diet in human body, especially uh, pharmaceutical plants. And why pharmaceutical plants? Because uh, we have uh, in my country is the botanical garden of the earth. We have uh, uh, the second, we are the second in biodiversity in the earth. We have 6,300 pharmaceutical plants, and from those, uh, 1,300 are domestic. Consider that Germany has 10 domestic and England has 12. And we have 1,300 domestic. It, this could be, and it was a, a, it's a very important uh, uh, component of our diet for years. For, I mean, thousands of years, I don't know. So, so when I came back from the States, I had a good background in molecular biology, and I realized and I decided to study these effects. So I spent all of, all of my life studying the effect of pharmaceutical plants in human health, molecular biology, cell biology, physiology, whatever you can imagine. And we have published most, more than 250 articles. I am now... Uh, the president of the of the Greek uh, Innovation Council uh, in in agriculture. I am a rep representative of my country, the European Union. I'm the president of the Greek uh, Toxicology Society and many other things, but nothing. Okay, I'm 60, and everything has to be different. So I found this kind of uh, I mean think very interesting and I decided to, to start working with fasting and uh, I wanted to show you some things. Oops. Uh, you can see here that inside our body, every time now that we speak, about 5% five per, five of the oxygen that we consume, it is converted to free radicals. And the body 
has a lot of weapons to detoxify. And you see here, I don't, I don't want to go deeply into that because I know that you don't like chemistry and biochemistry, but keep from that, that uh, there are many, many different steps in the detox detoxification of free radicals. And I will go deeply in a, in a moment. And uh, if we say that, uh, okay, we have antioxidants and we have to take antioxidants to uh, detoxify free radicals, this means nothing, completely nothing. Because if you don't know in a particular person what is the uh, particular, I mean, profile of antioxidant machinery, you shouldn't do anything. It's very, very dangerous for me. So, one very important antioxidant into the body is glutathione. It's a tripeptide. So, glutathione accounts in the, in the cells about 50% or 60% of the total antioxidant capacity. And inside blood, the role is another molecule which is called uric acid. Both of them, uric acid is a catabolic component from DNA and glutathione is a tripeptide which is synthesized from the amino acids that we take. So if you consider the other components of the antioxidant capacity inside or outside the cells, almost 90% of, of our antioxidant activity, capacity, ability is based on what we eat and especially uh, protein and uh, components uh, that we eat. I don't uh, count on that fruits and antioxidants, polyphenols and other things, which account for about 10% of the total antioxidant capacity. So 90% of the total antioxidant capacity is based on our diet, whatever we eat, except fruits and polyphenols and teas and coffee and whatever, and 10% is based on uh, polyphenols, fruits, coffee, tea, and, and well, this kind of things that we consume. And this is very important to know. So, uh, it is known that uh, low glutathione levels, it is linked to many different dysfunctions and metabolic diseases like cancer and aging. It's not a metabolic disease, it's something very, I mean, uh, natural. But we should keep that uh, we transformed in our societies in West aging from the total socio-biological event to a purely biological event. And this is something that you should think and keep it. And we can discuss after that if you want. And see here that uh, in many metabolic diseases, like here, we have differences in many redox markers, which is glutathione, lipid peroxidation, catalase, which is an important enzyme, total antioxidant activity, and protein carbonyls in the same motif. That means in every, in every, uh, I mean, abnormalities and in every disease, we have a decrease of glutathione, increase of lipid peroxidation, decrease of catalase, decrease of total antioxidant capacity of blood, and increase in protein oxidation. And we can see here, most, in most of the cases, the same motive. And you also keep this. So, how antioxidants work? We say, okay, take antioxidants, but how much? Everybody should take the same. And what happens if you take many antioxidants, a lot of antioxidants? And if you, do, if you take nothing antioxidants, are you okay or you have a problem? Nobody knows till yet. But I want to explain you how antioxidants work because antioxidants, whether they are coming into the body, they give their, their electron to detoxify free radicals and they are becoming free radicals themselves. And what happened next? They go, they, they go around and find free electrons to get, to take, 
and to be neutralized. And the most abundant uh, protein in nature, which can give electrons, is this protein. And this protein binds naturally another protein. So, these two, they are going to proteasoma degradation, and if we don't have that much uh, free radicals, uh, nothing happens. But if we have free radicals, then this take electrons from this protein, and RF2 is liberated, is going into the nucleus, and is going to bind specific motifs in the promoters of DNA, and upregulates a lot of antioxidant machinery, and so we have uh, the natural antioxidant uh, capacity in our cells. And we know that uh, fasting and health is very important. And uh, I took this uh, picture from uh, a very important article that uh, you sent me uh, three years ago. Uh, it was just before Christmas, or some after Christmas, I remember. It was uh, from uh, the group of Matson from NIH. And uh, you can see here that uh, fasting can increase st stress resistance, can increase autophagy, which is very important, future of our defense, uh, can change, can do this shift in the, in the fuel, which is important in metabolic health. Uh, it increases mitochondrial biogenesis and also increase cell survival. And all of this can lead finally to increased metabolic health. And we know many things now about that cellular, uh, molecular biology, physiologically, uh, biochemically. We know many things about how the effect of fasting is integrated into the body. How much we know, if you consider that I'm 60 years old, consider me in 14 days when I was so, so just a small, I mean, embryo. This is the knowledge that we have until now concerning fasting into uh, the metabolic health. We have a lot of, of, of things to learn. And I think uh, in some years, fasting will be the next drug in our health. Sorry? Yeah, it will be the next drug. And uh, you know that uh, drugs are expensive. We give billions of, 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 uh, of money, of euros, of dollars, whatever. But uh, exercise and fasting are two things that uh, are without money, so keep this. Okay, and what we have done, uh, we took blood from people which uh, were yeah, into the fasting program in the, in, uh, the clinic, and uh, actually it is very difficult or impossible to find such a sample because uh, there is a clinic, so the people are coming in, they are very well I mean, uh, regulated in their diet and whatever. So it, I don't know if it is any other place in the world that you can find such a sample so precious to do, to do research. And uh, you see here uh, these numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There are 12 important steps in the detoxification of uh, free radicals from the body. So if you don't know the picture of this particular uh, photo, you cannot have an idea of what happens into the body of, some, of a, pe a person that, do, that does fasting, does exercise, uh, consumes uh, food, does whatever. So this is the thing that uh, we measure. And we published in uh, uh, 2020 the first uh, article about the influence of uh, long-term fasting in blood redox status. And it was actually uh, the first uh, study uh, in the world uh, concerning the regulation of redox in, in people which were fasting. 
at, at that time uh, we had uh, 130 people in the, in, enrolled in the study. Six months ago, um, a study in, in a scientific reports, a very good journal, it is a brother of nature, they had uh, some uh, results from uh, various markers, not this exactly, but uh, similar to this, and the people that were enrolled in this study were three people. So you can imagine the importance of this, and until now we have uh, almost 11,000 downloads from the literature one week ago in with, uh, this article. So what we found, we found a lot of things, and uh, the most important is that uh, we found in after the fasting increase of the total antioxidant capacity in people and decrease in lipid peroxidation, which is very, very important markers of what happens in the body uh, if you want to have a picture about redox regulation. But you can see here some other also results. And uh, for me, the most important thing is that, and now we try to uh, go deeply in this uh, situation, and uh, we try to, uh, to start a new study in some months with a group of, of Francois. And uh, we'll have, uh, I think, in two years from now, the first evidence that uh, personalized diet in fasting. Now we know that uh, everybody is, is fasting, okay? It, it takes 250 calories or 500 or this and that. But what is the in, in, the, in personalized uh, I mean, context, we don't know. We know in, in two years from now. And this is going to be very important information about the uh, influence of fasting in, uh, in human health. So what we found, we found that glutathione, this very, very important uh, antioxidant into the body, we had uh, three, three uh, groups of people. One group of people, that had higher level of glutathione than normal. This went to normal, decreased. We have a group of people who had lower level of, of glutathione. This went to normal. And one uh, group of people that had normal value and remained normal. That means, differently from what we were uh, thinking as a uh, as a, I mean, uh, in general, uh, in redox regulation before, not only, not only in fasting in general, that uh, if we have a, a high glutathione, it's good. No, it's not good. You have to have a certain level of glutathione because high uh, uh, if you have a high level of glutathione, it is linked to prediabetes, and, and a lot of other, uh, I mean, diseases. And this called, differently from oxidative stress, reductive stress. It is a new term which is, uh, uh, in, I mean, adopted in the last five, six years, and it's very, very important. So from fasting, we understand that we have a, a normalization of glutathione, and this was the first, uh, I, I mean, very important observational observation that we had in this, in our particular, I mean, uh, uh, study, and most of the 11 something thousands people from 57 countries that are coming and download, most of these, almost 8,000 people, they did want to, anything to do with fasting. They were people uh, working with uh, redox regulation and especially glutathione, and I, I'm sure that they wanted to, to read this story. Then another thing, how much do I have? More? Five minutes? Okay. Uh, the second uh, article that uh, we published, uh, the same year, from the same people, it, it was this in Food and Chemical Toxicology, and uh, we study almost every marker that we measure in uh, redox. And we uh, also correlate with many different metabolic uh, uh, markers. And we uh, found out very important things, uh, which is 
that uh, redox regulation is very closely related to the benefit of uh, the metabolism that happens after fasting. And this is very important information. And you can see here exact the results, and I don't want to go deeply, and keep this. Uh, if we, with a machine learning algorithm that uh, Robin helped us and uh, in our group, uh, we found out that uh, the most important parameter before fasting, if you want to measure, was lipid peroxidation had the higher potency to predict changes in metabolism after fasting. And this is very important. So it's, it is very, very well documented now that, uh, I mean, redox regulation, it is very linked to metabolic uh, shift and uh, uh, the benefit that we have in, in metabolism. And in the last, uh, in the last minutes, I will uh, tell you uh, some, of the, some of the results. We hypothesized, we didn't know that, it, it, it is the first study that uh, was published uh, last year, that uh, during fasting, some genes will change their expression. So we took blood and we looked in uh, some microRNA expression in blood and we found many, all, all of them that we found, they were changing in a way that it's very close related to metabolic health. That means that uh, all of this, you see that it's uh, now it's uh, uh, red. That means that they are down. This corresponds to metabolic health. If it is uh, uh, green, it is upregulated, and this corresponds to metabolic health. And we found that uh, these three microRNAs are coming and showing the benefit in the liver. These are coming and showing the benefit in the heart after fasting, and these are coming from adipose tissue and show the benefit uh, in adipose tissue after fasting. Very important, I think. You see here uh, some also information. I don't want to go deeply and, and uh, be tired. You'd be tired. Uh, also here some, uh, I mean, uh, correlations. But uh, keep this. This is the keg pathway. It's, it's a pathway which is made up for each particular person according to the values of microRNA. And you can see that if you have the values of somebody after fasting, you can find, you can make these pathways which link almost everything with any disease, which is fantastic. And it's very important information to, to find out and to have at least some evidence, uh, first evidence that uh, how fasting uh, uh, affects uh, our genes and this is very, very important. Uh, so, to have an holistic uh, evaluation, and I'm closing, I think I, I took my time, uh, we have uh, these biomarkers that we measure before fasting and after fasting, just in two different time points. And uh, according to this, we have uh, the calorie restriction, we have the physical exercise, and also we have some antioxidants, and all of this uh, finally increase stress defense and uh, lead to metabolic health, which is very important for our lives and for our uh, society. And it, please, it's uh, without money. So uh, the funding of, this, uh, of these studies uh, came from uh, uh, here, from uh, uh, Buchinger, uh, I mean, uh, this funding, and um, thank you very much. <laughs>